Yes. Today, you have the chance of a lifetime. Correct. You get the chance to knock the gigantic head off the Irish eyes. Correct. Jordan Devlin. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you perceive your ability to outdo Jordan Devlin going into this matchup? I have 100% confidence in my ability during this matchup, um, and I look forward to beating him. I look forward to you beating him as well. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all from Mustache Mountain. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on BT Sport next Friday. Thank you. Okay. Is <laughs> that what we're actually doing? No. No. I just made you. So you guys, I mean, the, the whole experience has taken you guys to the US. You've been to Full Sail. You've been on takeovers. You've been. You've done a lot of stuff. What has been the most surreal moment of the whole journey for you, Tyler, so far? Um, I feel like I've had a a bunch of pretty surreal moments. Um. First one, obviously, being the original tournament. Uh, second one being TakeOver Chicago with Pete. Another one when we won the NXT tag titles at Royal Albert Hall. Uh, the match with Walter. The match we had with Undisputed at Brooklyn TakeOver. And the, the match with Walter. The sale, actually, as well. Yeah. When we unfortunately lost the titles. Yeah. That was a, a very, mem very memorable moment. That yeah. was a five-star. It was an absolute yeah. classic. Yeah. I believe it may well have been the most critically acclaimed, highly rated tag match in WWE history. Is that cool for you to kind of have not just, you know, there's so many elements to it, but getting to go to the US and being part of a show like that and getting such critical acclaim for it. I mean, is that kind of, was that one of the goals when you guys started doing this? It's got to be, if you want to, if, if you want to perform for the market leader in any brand or any work environment or, or, or anything, you have to obviously have that expectation of yourself on your own shoulders. Do you know what I mean? You can't go out there and go, oh yeah, well, uh, you know, just hope I have a good one. Yeah, you have to yeah, take the mentality you that you have, have to have at this level of the game. Yeah, I'd say you have to almost take full responsibility for all of your actions and just yeah. and have like full confidence in yourself and and just and just put that weight on your shoulders and then and and carry it through with the confidence that you've trained for you know ten years, you've had a thousands of matches. The whole point now is now you give it back to the use of this. Now you give it back to the fans and you go, this is what you paid for and more. I mean, and you get like you say, you've been on takeovers. You've set all these goals. What are the what are the next goals for both of you individually and and together? Uh, me personally, I'm looking very uh, wide-eyed at the moment at the Royal Rumble. I think you know Pete broke down a massive barrier last year uh, by being the first person from NXT UK to obviously enter the Royal Rumble. Um, the Royal Rumble is the match, or you know, apart from you know, apart from telling people that you've been on WrestleMania. You know, the Royal Rumble is just the one. It's synonymous with anyone who's ever seen a wrestling show in their life. They know what the Royal Rumble is. So uh, I think that would be a great little feather to our, to ours or my cap. Mm, definitely. I just want to enjoy wrestling. Yeah. You know, I, I just like keeping it fresh and interesting. So something I want to ask you guys is obviously it's in, in the media and stuff it's been very big about the, the vegan diet and people being vegans and athletes being vegan specifically like how do you guys manage that especially being pro wrestlers and being on the road when there might not be as, as many options and stuff how easy or difficult is it for people who are maybe thinking about going vegan like how do you guys manage it? Mm -hmm. Um, I um, feel that <coughs> when, we st when we start, it's mu it's much easier now. It, look, on honestly, anyone could do it now because yeah, there's so many vegan alternatives. But the mistake that people need to avoid making is there's a big um, difference. It's like basing their whole diet off of like mock meat, like fake meat foods. You know, uh, uh, the, the worst thing that could happen is everybody gets this misconception of that's what veganism is, and then they all they all start only eating like mock meats and all of these like fake meat foods and everybody ends up anemic and has all these problems and then they blame veganism for it it's not veganism it's just that they did it wrong you have to make sure that you eat like a as well I, this is how I like to do it anyway I, I like to eat as natural as possible and as many colours as possible it's like it's like even, it's like, say you're on just a normal you're a carnivorous diet right you, I can walk through a shopping centre and tell you now that 80% of people are malnourished. 
you know malnourished doesn't mean that you haven't had enough food it means you haven't had the correct nutrients to get your body at kind of like an optimum performance level that's that's the difference you know i think there's a big there's, there's many differences ethically and morally and everything between veganism and a plant-based diet so i think people should you know vegan is the buzzword but i think people if they want to have a look into it they should look into plant-based a plant-based diet of vegetables and fruits and grains that's that that's that's going to be the best way for you i also advise people to not uh tar everyone with the same brush um like, I, don't, I don't want to be tarred with the same brush as a lot of like angry like, militant. militant vegan activists I, i'd like to be more of like a an inviting vegan i want, I want to invite people I, I, and i just want people to if, if I if I ask anything of anyone, it's just to be open-minded to it. Yeah. My last thing was going to be, what do you guys think of the vegan state because sausage roll? We'll move on from that since that's mock meat. No, but no, 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 no. Yeah, that's the whole point. Like, do you think are they decent? No, yeah, no, no person on a normal carnivorous diet eats McDonald's every day. Yeah. You just every so often you'll have a, a, a bit of fast food, and every so often we'll be like, oh, go on then. We'll we'll try that new Subway meatless meatball or something like that. Sponsors. What's your, fa- <laughs> What's your favourite uh, thing in the high sheet you can get, like vegan alternative to something? Just I tried people. that KFC thing last week. Yeah. That's not so bad. It's yeah, it's alright. Yeah. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Wagamama. Yeah, Wagamama's good. Wagamama. Definitely our favourite place to eat on the high street in any town. Wagamama. 